Uh, thank you. I'd just like to start by acknowledging the uh, Jane Nicholas uh, Star Fellowship. It's a fantastic initiative and uh, I was very excited to uh, be the uh, Jane Nicholas uh, Star Fellow for 2016. It was a terrific opportunity and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So, I set out to geotag our oral histories collection, or a small part thereof, as a pilot. Um, initially, I was interested in what methods we could use to extract those locations, and I was looking at methods of uh, transcribing voice to text, initially trying to use um, machine uh, translation methods, and then hoping to apply uh, named entity recognition methods to do that. Um, this, I'd have to say, was less than successful. Um, as anyone who's listened to any of our oral histories will be aware, the, the sound quality is very variable, um, whether it be just poor tape quality or coffee machines going in the background or people walking in and out of the room. There's all sorts of things that tend to, to mess things up. So initial efforts at machine transcription, I found I only got about a 10% catch for locations, which was quite poor. Um, one of the providers, VoiceBase, has an Australian English engine, so I tried that one. That, that doubled it up to about 20% catch, still not very good. Uh, paid big dollar to get uh, a human transcription. That was, uh, came in at 70%, which is sort of okay. But manual methods, actually listening to the content yourself and listening and finding the locations turned out, unsurprisingly, to be the best way to do it. So I'll just now show you a demo which is with an app that I've been working with for some time, which uh, actually predates the fellowship but uh, has developed through this time. And that'll show us, uh, in this instance, uh, an oral history by Barry Dickens. There were two, there were lots of hippie centres in the late 60s. One was called Arts Cooperative, which is in the middle of Trobe Street. And I met him there, and he had long um, sort of afro hair, which had uh, looked like creatures that roosted in the hair. You know, sparrows or twigs or thin, rodents, I don't know. All this life was rattling around in his hair. And he was drawing. Um, I think this is the blonde on blonde cover that's got Dylan with the afro here on the cover. Mm. It's on a dark blue. And he was doing a crayon drawing off that cover and there was about 150 hippies in this old shed called Art, Arts Cooperative. So there we have a location nearby the library. So that's obviously Little Latrobe Street where Barry's talking about a, a, you know, a hippie commune in Little Latrobe Street that existed you know, back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Genevieve's Cafe is another location that's mentioned. That's where the interview actually took place. Moving up into Carlton, we've got the Albion Hotel, which gets a mention later on. We've also got the Pram Factory. And he talks about uh, a play that he yeah, did at so the moment. So the were well, myriad, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> you, you've been a playwright and had plays performed at La Mama, haven't you? Yeah, I started at La Mama yep. in 1975. Yep. My first play was on. It was called Ghosts, mm -hmm. the same type as the Ibsen play, but nothing like the Ibsen play. And Chris was in that play. But he'd studied acting. Yeah. And he's a good actor. I'm a good actor in film. I can do cameos in film, yeah, but yeah. I ad-lib too much. <laughs> For example, on opening night, I saw someone in the front row at La Mama. We had seven actors in the play. It was the alcoholic search for Henry Lawson. Yeah. It was a sort of a trying to find the spirit of Lawson. That was was that the title of the play? That was the that, no. It was called Ghosts, and it mm. was this search. Yeah, right. Of I see. Spiritual yeah, yeah, look yeah. for Lawson. But it was actors in the play. So there we hear some of the issues we get with uh, trying to uh, extract anything out of uh, oral histories. We had the uh, coffee machine in Genevieve's firing up, and uh, I spared you the uh, frothing of the milk which followed, which uh, was, uh, made the uh, text even more indecipherable. So now we'll just do a quick demo here of how we can add in a new location. So we've got a mention here of... Uh, well, I want to tell you a funny story, because I remember in 1982, I was living under... This is not a lie, it's underneath Collingwood... Uh, Victoria Park Railway Station with my girlfriend. 
that I later married, Sarah Mogridge, her name is. This is the girl you're still married to? Yeah, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we loved each other and we got a little... We, had, we, we rented a rattling, rattling cottage. It rattled when the train from Layla went over it. You know, 414, yeah. the first one, the house physically shook. It's a good house to drink in. Where you, was that? You didn't notice you had the shakes. Yeah, under these Victoria Park railways, yeah. it's a yeah. house right under it's it. still there? Yeah, we 65 yeah. Yarra Street. Yeah. So there we have a location that we've just heard, 65 Yarra Street in uh, Abbotsford. So I'll just show you how you can add a new tag in here. We set the time, add in a phrase that, uh, the phrase that's been heard, in this case, 65 Yarra Street. Excuse my slow typing on the demo. And then we go and find the location on the map, which is also 65 Yarra Street. So there we've got the details there that we need to uh, identify that location. We've got the offset into the audio, we've got uh, the phrase that's been heard, and then we've got the uh, the coordinates and the uh, actual street address. And there we go, that's now emerged on the, on the screen. Yeah, under these Victoria Park railways, yeah, there's a yeah. house right under it's it. still there? Yeah, we 65 yeah. Yarra Street. Yeah, I know where it is. And one morning I said to Sarah, says, before she goes to, she works as a producer at the ABC, she says, she, I'll, I'll we, come back to that. We got the rent, she says. She still works as a producer? No, she, she runs a shop now. Snippet of JSON. Uh, so we have a genre of oral history. Uh, we've got a link to our oral histories page. Uh, we've got a location there with the latitude and longitude. Uh, we've got a little image there which gives the image just of the uh, uh, the SLV, uh, What's Your Story logo. And we've got a link to the, the uh, audio file there, most of the way down the bottom there, and reference to Barry Dickens, the place. Now look at another one here, and you'll notice that this one doesn't actually have a location. So at, early on, actually, I was... Um, working with uh, Felicity Garrigan, and she was um, doing some tagging for me, and she suggested that uh, we also be able to tag by topic. So I ran with that and uh, added in some functionality whereby we could tag by topic. So you'll see there, third row from the bottom is uh, topic. In this case, it's uh, Dimboola, the play Dimboola. So adding topic tags. Um, as I said, yeah, while we're adding, uh, while we're geotagging, why not add topic tags as well? Um, so the question then was what to use as a knowledge base. I chose to use Wikipedia just for the reason that 50% of all Google searches uh, have a Wikipedia page returned on the first page. So it seemed like a logical uh, knowledge base to use, but any knowledge base could be used. Um, so we'll have a, an example here of, uh, this is in, in this case, uh, Amori Fields uh, oral history. And uh, yeah, we'll, I'll take you through a little demo here of adding in a tag for and, uh, topic. At night, we were doing a show at the Chevron called Dimboola. So here we've heard a reference to the play Dimboola. You can add in a topic. Terribly slow typing again, I'm afraid. <clears throat> so there we've got uh, yeah, Dimboola, the play by Jack Hibbard. So that's been returned back from, from Wikipedia. So now the, the, uh, we can save that. And... Uh that ran for 17 months at the Chevron when we did it. We uh, changed a little bit of... That was of, a play, really, wasn't it? That's right. Mm. We changed a little bit of it, like where I sang a song with the ukulele, and mm. Val and I did a little soft shoe, mm. and uh, 
uh, Mr. Hibbert wasn't too wrapped in that. He said, you shouldn't change my play. Mm. But I think it ran for six weeks at the pram factory. Yeah. We ran for 17 months at the Chevron. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, so, <laughs> so there he is taking a shot at Jack Hibbert about his uh, play and thinking it's a good idea to put a soft shoe into <laughs> his play. I don't understand why Jack Hibbert wasn't happy. Um, so here we go, just a, a list of, of all the, uh, the tags within this particular oral history. And you'll see that uh, actually the uh, topic tags outnumber the location tags. The topic tags are in red. I think the greatest thing that I really loved doing was uh, out of the Monash, mm -hmm. the Alexandra Theatre there, the uh, death of a salesman. Oh, yes. I played Willie Lohman in that. Well, that was really getting into acting, wasn't it? Well, the director, Bruce Kerr, it was, he thrust a book into my hand and said, learn that. It wasn't a script, it was a book. Mm. <laughs> mm. OK, now, given that we've uh, used Wikipedia as a knowledge base for topic tagging, we can then go away and start adding in uh, content into a Wikipedia page, in this case the one on Morrie Fields. Um, so I'll just cut to the two relevant fields here. So you'll see there there's a reference here to Field performing in several plays, including Dimbula, and also playing the part of Willie Lohman in Death of a Salesman, which he's, we've just heard him talking about. And you'll notice there that there is a, a reference, and then down the bottom there we have a citation. Well, there's in fact two citations there, but uh, the citation we're interested in is the bottom one, which refers to uh, that that section of the text where he mentions uh, his uh, love of playing Willie Lohman in Death of a Salesman. So obviously this opens up quite a bit of scope for us to tag, to um, reference back from Wikipedia pages into our collections to what are effectively uh, primary sources or secondary sources, I suppose you'd say, if uh, you take the taped original as being the primary source. But uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment with the project. Um, I'm looking for volunteers to help me in the tagging of these uh, oral histories. So anyone who's interested, let me know and uh, we'll get you on board. Um, we've still got a few issues with uh, around rights um, and splash pages uh, that we need to put up about rights of use uh, for people that are going to listen to the to the history. So that's uh, that's still in train at the moment, but. Uh, this app is currently in beta, and if anyone wants to get a copy of it, uh, it's uh, currently just on iOS, but uh, if you'd like a copy, let me know. And hopefully at some stage in the not too distant future, it'll go uh, up onto the App Store. Um, yeah, thanks very much for listening, and uh, thank you.